Welcome back to part three of three for Port Expert and Mastercam. So, so far, have a little recap of what we've done. We've created splines in order to create tool paths to rough out these four ports. In lesson one, we did the spline. We just finished lesson two where we did the roughing out of these ports. And now what we're going to do is a finish and just a real quick run through of some of the modifications you may make to optimize your toolpaths. Now, because the regeneration takes upwards of four minutes to regenerate these finish paths, I've already done them, but I'm just gonna go through the parameters that I set and how I changed them to get it a finish pass as opposed to a roughing. So, we had our four roughing toolpaths right here. I took those four, copied and pasted them down below, and they became the four finished toolpaths. Now in the parameters for the finishing, we start up at the top. I changed the cut pattern to finish around um, because it's the most common and most popular toolpath for this particular type of port. Along is where it goes back and forth and that's for something much, much smaller or much more open. We have a pretty tight one inch diameter port here. So going around is gonna be our best path to clean that up. I didn't have to adjust the surfaces or the spline, but I did adjust the step over. Now 10 thousandths is, is a very, very fine finish. You could probably get away with 20 thousandths here just fine and get a great finish. Nothing needed to be changed on the axis control or the collision control for this finish pass. And the linking parameters were fine just where they were at as well. Um, so some of the things you may change if your part is giving you some gouges or some areas that aren't cleaning up very well. So move this over here real quick. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that one, your tool stick out is far enough. Shoulders and the overall length is good for the parts you're making. So whenever you know that's good, then some of the things you may change are going to be this max from bottom. Now, the reason why I knew max from bottom was going to be the best way to approach this part is because these pockets up here. But if you had pockets here and here, you might do the midpoint option. So you're going to have to play around with some of those options to see which one's going to give you the cleanest cleanup. On the tool axis control, this angle doesn't change a lot, but sometimes adjusting this by a few degrees may help. Minimize tilting should be on automatically. Um, I would always have that on. And then we have collision control. I've had to make a lot of adjustments on my collision control with both the shank and the shoulder just to keep it a little further off the walls than what I had to in this particular example. But sometimes my shank may go up to 50 thousandths and my shoulder may be the same, um, just to give me that little extra clearance for it to get into a tight corner or something. So those are some of the things you may adjust whenever you're running these types of tool paths. But again, the first thing you wanna do is get the blue lines on the screen, get a tool path, go ahead and let it gouge the part, see where it's gouging, and then we'll make those adjustments. Maybe the tool has to stick out further. Maybe we need more of a clearance plane on the shoulder or the shank. We really won't know until we try a few things, run it again, check it out, and then make more adjustments. The only suggestion I could give you is every time you make a single adjustment, rerun it. And if that didn't fix it, make a different adjustment and rerun it. Because when you make three or four adjustments at once, you're never going to know which one really fixed your problem. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through the roughing and the finishing so we can see what kind of finish that 10,000 step over gives us. It is, like I said, an ultra fine finish, um, probably overkill for most applications, but I don't want to regenerate a different path because it's a three to four minute regeneration. Let's start roughing. And I haven't adjusted feeds and speeds or anything on these tools, so they're all running fairly slow. Um, we're just 
creating an image on the screen so you can see how the toolpath runs. Uh, depending on the material you're cutting, it's probably going to run a lot faster than this. So let's take a look at that finish. Yeah, that's that's about as fine of a finish as you're going to get on any kind of color style toolpath like this. So again, that was that was Core Expert and Mastercam. Um, we did four different ports. We started with the spline, and we roughed it out, and we copied all of our tool pads and ran these finish passes. So go ahead and try some of that on some of your parts, see how it works for you, and always feel free to reach out to us here at QTE if you ever get stuck or have any problems.